Hi, my name is Justin and I'm here at our training centre in Warrington for this week's edition of Training Tuesday. This is going to be part one of electrical safety checks. This will cover electrical safe isolation as per technical bulletin 118. So let's have a closer look at the equipment we'll need to carry out electrical safety checks. One of these items is a non-contact voltage indicator. This must be capable of measuring voltage below 60 volts. The next item we need to be using is an approved voltage indicator. To be able to ensure this device is working, we also must have a means of testing the voltage indicator. This, is, in this case, is a proven unit. Another item that we're going to need to use is a plug-in earth loop tester. Once we've safely isolated the circuit, we then need to be able to lock off the equipment. It's important to inform anyone else in that property or the work area not to re reuse that circuit. This is why we need to attach a label to our lock-off device. For the second part of this, I'm going to be using a multimeter. This multimeter must have fuse leads connected with finger guards and the probes to have a maximum of two to four millimeters exposed at their tips. So that's the equipment that we're going to be using now to carry out electrical safe isolation. Okay then, so to set the scene, we've just arrived and we're now about to carry out a service on our Baxi 800 II behind us here. Before I carry out any work, I need to carry out a quick visual inspection to make sure there's nothing um, dangerous or around the appliance. Obviously being in a training centre, that's absolutely fine in here for us. Remember the first part of this, I'm going to carry out a safe to touch test using my voltage indicator. Before I use this, I'm going to put it to a known live source and I'll be looking for this to indicate for me. Everything's okay with that now, so what I'm going to go on to now is I'm going to put this around the case, including the sides. and any exposed pipe work. If I had a flue on there, then I would test around the flue as well. And I'm going to reprove this device against my known live source. This has proven that the device is still working. What this has proven for me now is only that it's safe, as it suggests, to touch the case. The next part is going to be to identify, then isolate my isolation point for the electrics. As we can see, the display has now gone blank on the boiler. Now, you might be under the impression that the electrics have gone off. However, I could have an issue here with um, reverse polarity or possibly a secondary electrical feed. I'm now going to remove the fuse from the fuse spur. The next stage is going to be to remove the front case of the appliance and then to expose the electrics. Once exposed, I'm now going to use my proving device to test my voltage indicator. I'll be looking for this to indicate to show me that it's working. I'm now going to go across and identify my mains voltage connection into the appliance. My first connection I'm going to go to is between my earth and my neutral. As we can see here, I've got no indication of any voltage. I'll then remove both of the probes, refit onto the earth first, then across onto my live, and repeat the test. Disconnect both of the probes, now test onto my neutral first, then onto my live. Again, I've got no indication there, 
So everything is fine. Now, if I had external controls wired into this appliance, which I don't on this one, I would repeat those checks. I now need to reprove the device just in case it's not working. As we can see from there, it's indicating so everything is fine. Just a point on this, with our wiring connection, which as we already know is removable, it's possible to carry out these checks either from the rear, as indicated there, or from on top. Either or, depends on what type of probes and, and uh, equipment you've got. After carrying out my safety touch test, I will then use my plug-in earth loop tester. Now I'm going to plug in my earth loop tester. At this stage, I'll be looking for this to indicate an earth loop below 200 ohms. As we can see here, this one is fine. It's also showing that my polarity and my circuits are correct, indicated at the top there. The next part will be to safely lock off my isolation points. As I'm using, as the device is a fused spur, I'll be using this type of device. As you can see here, this is my isolation point, and this is a fused spur, so I'm going to put this device over the front of it. At this point, I need to loosen off the connections, holding the plate back. Lock it over on the front of the pins, as we can see there. I'll then close that cover. Put a padlock through it. To include my warning label. Once fitted, this means that nobody else can come along and refit the fuse or put the electric circuit back there. And this warning, as we can see, tells everybody that I'm working on that circuit. So, working safely with electrics not only protects you but your customers and could also be the first part of your electrical fault finding. Look forward to seeing in part two where we're going to cover electrical prelims and polarity checks. For further info, look on our website, backsea.co.uk forward slash training. <laughs>